this is the first day of our second week and uh, hopefully we'll cover rest of the remaining portion or remaining portion of the juniper so we are trying to understand juniper with the practical approach as much as possible let me open the event sheet In my basic lab. Yesterday we tried JWeb also. Not yesterday, means in the last session uh, on the Friday. Let's start the router, the BMX router, so machines, uh, today I'm going to introduce the Windows box also in this, I have one Windows machine, it requires little more number of RAM, in terms of GB, uh, it's asking for 4 GB. Let's keep it 2 GB. So today we are going to see the login classes, concept of login classes. And uh, with additional one more user, like username Samir, I'm going to <clears throat> connect with the, with the X, X, FXP interface, right? the management interface. Furthermore, uh, we'll enable SSH over it, right? We'll see the uh, factory default also. And we'll talk about the uh, private configuration and the exclusive configuration. Right? So in the last session, we did discuss about this, but practically we have not tested it so this time we, we are going to test it on the on the practical basis right? and at the end we will see the factory default configuration uh, how much ram we are using how much cpu we are using we can check in eveng with the help of status option so we do have little more RAM available. It's around 28% of CPU usage and uh, memory usage is 35%. Let me check, uh, is the router accessible now? Not yet, it's booting up. And let me check Windows is accessible or not. So for Windows, we have to use VNC viewer. Emmanuel, uh, you have not received the file. Uh, let me share the link with you again.
use this Google Drive link and you can access the folder where I have kept this. So our network is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. And let me check what IP we have here. ncpa.cpl is a short command to open the LAN connection in Windows box. This uh, Windows box works, but it is pretty slow. So we have to be patient while using these machines. If you have a server machine, then it works fast, but for the desktop or laptop based event, it, it does take time. So I'm keeping 15 as the Windows Windows uh, IP address. We don't have a DNS server and not required in this case. Let's check the connectivity with the uh, VMX router. Ten dot one is the IP address of VMX router. <clears throat> there is no problem here. Let me check if I can ping from the Juniper router. Yes, I can ping from here. Let me check one more time from the Windows box. why we have these two addresses i'm not sure about let me disable and enable the interface I'll take a reboot of this machine. Meanwhile, we'll do the rest of the configuration on <clears throat> VMX router. So first of all, we are going to create a user with the name Samir okay and for that we have to be there in the system login okay so let's open the configuration of vmx router 
right now we are in the operational mode okay now let's go to the configuration mode okay and we are on the top of the hierarchy so we have to go first of all on the system right and within a system we have login options right to create a login classes we will create a login so you can see here we are in the edit system login and now we are able to create a user with the name Samir and we will put this user in the class super user okay so <clears throat> the command is straightforward and we'll talk about the class theoretically what it signifies so set user this is just a name we can put any name like you guys can put your name there right and then class so here we have a different classes like operator read only super user unauthorized and you can see in the square bracket unauthorized means you don't have any permission so for example there is a user uh, let's consider ganesh is a user but ganesh is a senior engineer but uh, for next 15 days he is on holiday and he has lots of authority on over the system so what we can do we can put him under unauthorized for the next 15 days so if any hacking attempt is done so he will not be able to this hacker will not be able to use ganesh credential or whoever is on the vacation whoever is on the long leave or whoever is on the break right they we will put them under unauthorized okay uh, super user as the name suggests it can do anything just like a root user in our linux system or in our uh, juniper system read only and suppose a trainee engineer is there and we are not going to give any configuration access as of now but you can do like a ping command or some monitor command so read only access is available so that training engineer like l1 engineer can only access system in the read only mode operator where uh, limited access we have like clear clearing the some of the uh, filters right and uh, some of the uh, clearing the some of the uh, debug uh, commands right uh, reset commands, trace command, view commands, means limited access we will have with the help of operator. Right? But uh, for this summary user, I'm going to give all the rights and how we can do that with the help of super users. Let's put it as a super user. Okay. And we have to set a password also for this particular user. So we will give a command set user Samir authentication plain text password I'm going to give the same simple password for the time being admin 123 admin 123 if I check here show compare you can see under edit system login we are adding a user samir with the class super user with the authentication encrypted password okay and while committing this particular task what we can do we can put a comment as well created user samir right so let's Furthermore, we can put the date as well, 11, 
जीरो थ्री टू जीरो टू फोर right so this user is available now right and if we go to the top of the hierarchy and see this command is available via run because this is a operational mode command and you can see here the last commit means roll back 0 is done with this command okay and done by the user root next we'll try to understand the private configuration configure private and configure exclusive right uh, for this we can we can configure the uh, ip first of all we'll try to understand the rollback zero we have discussed about this in the past but uh, we can do it practically one more time run so setting interface here first of all I'll, i'll exit from here so we are in the operational mode now if i run show interface thus this show ip interface brief i can see i have ip address 1.1.1.1/8 on uh, ge002.0 okay now let's make some changes there set uh, to make the changes we have to be in the configuration mode so let's use a configure command right? and then set the interface set interface ge002 dot 0 is unit 0 family inet address let's make it 2.2.2.2 slash 32 okay and if we check here show compare so we are changing this One dot already one dot one dot one dot one is there, and we are adding one more IP address on top of this, uh, because uh, in in a uh, Juniper we can have multiple IP addresses, primary as well as secondary and tertiary IP addresses on interfaces. So this could be possible here. Right. So in in case of Cisco router, if you give another IP address, the previous IP address will get overwrite overwritten. Here there is no such a thing here we have a additional or you can say it, it goes into the append append mode right and uh, suppose i don't want to do this i want to get rid of this so i can run a command roll back 0 okay when you do this and check the show compare now you don't have any change available okay so if i do a commit there won't be anything because uh, already we have committed this okay this fx p0/0 i'm not using because i already have a ip address on the router by the way is it visible in our interface let's check fxp 0/0 is not visible in our vmx router directly by the way this fxp 0/0.0 is used as the management interface so in our case mostly this is represented as uh, em0 okay management interface it, it is used as em0 
we are not using this because we already have a connectivity between our VMX router and the Windows 7 box. Let me check after reboot how it is responding. This Windows box may not be available in your e light. If it is not available, I'll share the image of this. In the Google Drive later on. But again, this is a big file. Let me check the connectivity. Still it is behaving strange. We are receiving the packet, but we are not able to send the packet. Am I giving the correct range of IP address? Yes, it is. Uh, this is a direct connection route. We don't need any additional route here. Let me try to ping the cell IP address. Self IP address is also not working. Ideally, it should get the IP address and form the connectivity with the Jennifer route. But for some unknown reason, it is not connecting with the VMX router. Do we have any utility at the SSH in VPC4? Let me check. We don't have SSH. But uh, we have our login. I'm not sure, but sure because uh, this our login is not working properly for the last time. Let me check 192.168.10.1. On the port number 22. SSH we have not enabled yet. Let it be.
I'll check why this window is not working. Meanwhile, I can add a Cisco router as a SSH client. Change name. You see one. Okay, meanwhile, we will configure SSH over this. Okay. So, to configure SSH, we have to be there in system service SSH. Yes, no, son, the switch port is up. There is no problem with that. These are uh, virtual images. Sometimes it may create a problem. So, we have to work on that. We'll see. And go into the configuration mode and edit system services. Right? And under this, we can configure our SSH. Right? So, edit system services. We are in the services now. And let's set the service. SSH. If we have to do it from the top, we have to give the full command like edit system service SSH. But here I'm just setting SSH. Okay. Few more things we have to set. Set. Uh, let me go to the top of the hierarchy, system hierarchy. And here I'll try set. Uh, let's do it with the edit system services SSH. Under this SSH service, we will set the root login allow. Okay. And we'll set the SSH protocol as version 2. Let's go to the top and then show and compare what changes are expected here. Okay. So only the service related changes are visible here, right? Now we'll commit this and quit. So as of now, only one user is there. We can check that user. Show system users. The root user is logged in. Uh, but after logging from the another machine, because I want this PC file should access for the SSH. Let me take access of this PC file. We'll set the IP address here first. This Windows box is not working properly, so I'll just shut down this. Later on, I'll use it, but I need to troubleshoot why it is not working, or I can use another image of this. I'm just setting the IP address as, us as usual. You set the default route as well.
right let's press the connectivity to the default gateway which is our vmx router let's save the setting ssh 192.168.10.1 uh, I need to specify the user with the dash l command right? username is Samir and then I can specify the target 192.168.10.1 the password and check admin one two three and this is my access of the juniper router now if i test show system user so i have two users logged in here uh pressure the when we do a commit and when we put a remark, it's optional thing. Yeah, that that's really helpful. But every time it's not necessary, we can just uh, go ahead without uh, putting a comment as well. But it is a good practice, obviously. Actually, why I was asking is like uh, when we do it, Exactly, we, we can understand like for what purpose actually the last change we made, right? And in mm. case of in future troubleshooting, we can just search with that command or uh, the ticket number, right? Right, right. That that's a doable thing. Okay, so we are able to log in with multiple users now with the help of SSH, right? And a uh, root and uh, Samir both are on the same privilege as they are super user. Right? Both of them are the super user. Right? Now, now let's do a few more things. We will log in. We will go for the configure. exclusive options now okay and uh, okay. at the same time i'll try the other user like this uh, root user so you can see here a warning message users currently editing the configuration samir on since and with the exclusive options, right? So let me make you change here. Edit. Interface. GE. Zero slash zero slash zero dot two dot zero. And now let's set the IP address of family INEC address 2.2.2.2 slash 8. Let's try. So we got the permission denied because Samir has lock on the configuration. You understood the concept of uh, configure exclusive, guys. This time we have analyze this practically is it clear now i'll exit from this okay and this time we will configure with the private copy Here also, I'll configure it with the private copy. 
Okay. And let's make some changes from the root. Okay. And if you check here, show compare. So these changes are available that like we are adding these. Uh, we have 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 and additional few changes are not visible here. And we go to the top, we are already on the top. Now it is visible very clear that we are going to add this. Let's do the same thing here. Add it. Interface. GE 0 slash 0 slash 0, 2 dot 0. Family. INET. Address. This time three dot three dot three dot three slash eight. Let's go to the top. Uh, we have not used a set command. We just used the edit command here. We have to do a set command. By mistake, I used edit command. Let me use it set command here control a to take the cursor to the start delete key doesn't work there okay Now I'll try show compare here. Show pipe compare. Okay, and Instead of edit, let's make it set. Okay. So you can see here the candidate configuration of root user and the candidate configuration of Samir user is totally different. They are keeping their own private copy. Okay. So when root makes the commit right <clears throat> now the active configuration got changed and we have 1.1.1.1 as well as 2.2.2.2 right so let's try to show it this is a private configuration of samir user let's commit it here now let's exit We'll, we'll use it for uh, GE 0002.0 does specifically for this particular interface. Now we have all three IP addresses. The 2.2.2 .2 is being configured by root and 3.3.3 .3 is being configured by Samir, right? Let's exit. Show interface GE two dot zero. That's right. You can see here at the end they come to the same active configuration, but they have configured it individually. Hopefully, this is also clear for you now. Practically, you understood this. 
okay and the last thing that we have to see here is uh, the factory default setting right so if you want to remove all the previous configuration so we can do one thing we can go to the configure mode first and load a factory default right and if you check now show compare whatever changes we did right will go away There is a mandatory uh, thing that we have missed out. What is the mandatory thing? You should have a root authentication. Right? So let's set the root authentication. Root authentication, plain text password. Admin, one, two, three. Admin one thirty. Now let's commit this. You can see whatever IP and all we have configured is now gone away. Right. And I think we may have lost the connectivity from PC file because here the IP is, is connectivity will also be lost. So this is no longer accessible right? because we were accessing it with the help of IP address. That IP is also gone away, right? And again, go to the configure mode. And first of all, compare it, show, compare. Rollback. So I have multiple rollbacks here. Let me check uh, uh, the last commit done by Samir is rollback one. Let's check. So all these settings will get added if I apply rollback one. So let's apply rollback one. And if I run a show compare now. And all these changes will be applied again. So let's commit this. And we should have a connectivity from PC file. Okay. Is it clear, guys? For today's session, uh, I'm just winding up here only. Uh, rest of the points we will cover in uh, tomorrow's session. So what we have seen today, practically we have understood the role of classes, logging classes, right? Then we have practically uh, experienced the configure private and exclusive option. And we did explore the load factory default option as well. Okay, okay guys. So rest of the point we'll see in tomorrow's session.